my name is Delian and in this video I will run you through on how to set your bait casting reels, what are the main controls and we'll go through the casting motions. The main advantage of a bait caster over a standard spinning reel is that the transmission is far more powerful in a much more compact package as the gearing is in line with the spool. So you will crank bigger lures with bigger drag with a lot less effort. Also casting bigger lures is much easier with a bait caster. Another advantage is a far superior casting control as you will use your thumb to stop the spool at a desired distance. The moment you press your reel handle, the reel will engage. So basically, you will make a lot more casts in a day. Also, your casting distance will not be affected by the line diameter. So therefore, with a bait casters, you can use far heavier lines than with a standard spinning reel. Now I will run you through the basic parts of any bait casting reels. Any bait casting reel will have a double handle, will have a star drag, will have a tension knob, will have a centrifugal brake and obviously a spool and a thumb bar which releases the spool. Cranking motion on a bait caster is made just from your wrist and it's a much shorter movement so therefore your cranking feel is much much better. The star drag is a standard drag that works on an engaged reel. It's basically the same as with the spinning reel, but me personally, I like to use the thumb bar and use my thumb control as my drag. So basically, if I see fish surging, I will use my thumb to control on how much line I will give off. The thumb bar is at the bottom of a, of a bait casting reel and this serves just to free spool the reel. So when you press the thumb bar, your reel is free spooling. You make your cast and the moment your lure drops into water or before it drops into water, you just crank a little bit and your reel is engaged. So this will provide a much more cast throughout the day with a bait caster. Savage Gear bait casting reels have two casting controls. The one on the left is a tension knob which, which creates direct friction on the spool and one on the left is centrifugal brake. So the centrifugal brake will control the speed of your spool. So tension knob will control the friction and the centrifugal brake will control the speed. As you tighten up the tension knob, it will create more friction onto your spool. So the heavier baits you use, the more friction you will add to the spool because the speed of the bait and especially the bigger bait will actually pull the line off the spool. Centrifugal brake slows down your spool rotation and tunes it with the speed of your bait flying through the air. The most critical point of bait casting is immediately after you launch your bait because at this point your bait speed is at fastest. So this is where the centrifugal brake comes in. The better you will get at casting, the less centrifugal brakes you will use. And you will use your thumb a lot more. It's all about the thumb. So your thumb is the third and most important casting control. It's the one that's simplest to use and it's most intuitive. It only takes practice. So when you launch your bait, you will dictate the tension on your spool with your thumb. It sounds complicated, but with time it becomes very natural and intuitive and you basically don't even think about it. Here is how you will set your baitcaster if you're completely new with a baitcaster or you have just started using it. The centrifugal brake set at a medium setting, say 5 out of 10. And then your tension knob, you put your rod horizontally and let your bait free fall. Tighten your tension knob until when the bait hits the ground or the water, 
your spool stops turning. So basically if your lure hits the water and the inertia of the lure will not cause any overrun. This is as basic as it gets. Feel free to actually loosen up your tension knob a little bit right away. But more importantly, make sure that you use a heavy bait and make sure that at first you do not use a high speed cast. So basically lob your bait and do not use much force. At least until you get comfortable with how your spool reacts, with how your bait flies and with how you use your thumb. Also a very good tip is not to overfill your spool with line. With your spool half full, each turn of your spool will feed less line out of your reel. So this will prevent your overruns and backlashes. This is a very good setting for beginners, but it's also great for more advanced anglers when skipping and making precise casts with bait touching the water. So half filling your spool is a way to go, especially when you're starting off with a bait caster. Savage Gear bait casting reels have a few features I want to point out that make it stand out and make it really a great bait casting reel. The first feature is a non-lost knob tension knob. So this little plastic will not let the knob fall out if you lose it too much. So over the years I have lost some knobs on different sorts of bait casters. So this is really useful when using your reels in tournament or in any regular fishing, putting the rods down, carrying it in the car or in the boat. So this will help. The other feature is an external centrifugal brake. So this makes it really simple to control the speed of your spool by just turning the dial of your centrifugal brake. We have 0 to 10 setting with the 10 being most drag on the speed spool of your spool. Another really cool feature is line ID on the handle of your Savage Gear bait caster. So this will help you determine uh, what kind of line is pulled onto your reel really cool and helpful especially if you've not used your bait caster in a while also we have a very cool line clip on the spool which makes the spooling of the reel very simple all savage gear bait casters both sg10 sg6 or sg8 sit really comfortably in your hand cast really smoothly the casting controls are really simple they are responsive and you will cast really easy and it will be super comfortable to fish this bait casting reels. So the first and most common cast with a bait caster is an overhand cast. It's basically the same cast as you would do with a spinning reel. It doesn't offer precision, it doesn't offer quiet lure water entry, but it offers you distance. So what you will do is let your lure down at the half length of your rod, pull your rod behind your back and, and launch your bait at a 45 degree angle. Make sure you thumb your spool, especially at the beginning of your cast, because at that point, your, the difference between speed of your lure and speed of your spool rotation will be the greatest. And this is where you need to use your thumb. Also use your other left hand, if you're right-handed, to launch your rod and to load your rod. And uh, helping with your other hand at the butt will actually help you launch and cast entire day with far less effort. Underhand roll cast is the ultimate power fishing cast. It's the quickest way of getting your bait out of the water and back for a new presentation. It's also very precise and it's also very quiet. You will reel your bait up to approximately one third of your rod length Pull the bait out and use this motion to put your rod sideways, make a little turn and launch your bait back for a new presentation.
pitching is a close range technique, super precise and super quiet in presentation. It's almost exclusive to bait casters. You will lower your bait right at or just below the spool. You will set your controls at a very loose setting. Then you lower your rod tip, raise your reel and let the bait pendulum really close and parallel to the water. As you're reaching your target, you will thumb your spool and use your rod tip to put the lower super quietly in the water. Pitching is a super effective technique. It's made to make the predators react and it's very, very fun. Skipping with a bait caster is very fun. It offers great control. It, it allows you to cast from forehand, from backhand, you can underhand skip and you have a great control of the bait. But also it's the most challenging bait casting cast there is. The lure choice is very important when skipping because not all baits are good skipping baits. So for example, soft plastic baits, frogs skip well, but spinner bait will not be easy to skip. Also the rod is very important because it has to load and launch your bait near the surface. Really important when skip casting is not to overfill your spool with line. Also use a thick braid for skipping, for example 60 pound braid. This all will allow your reel not to feed too much line and in a way control the trajectory of your bait. You will also need to use your thumb to control the amount of line that you feed to the bait. Basically, when you make a skip cast, you control your bait all the way from launching your bait until reaching the target. When you start skip casting, make sure your centrifugal brake is at high because you want to slow down the speed of your reel. But as you will get better, you will start using less force with your skipping cast, you will make a much quieter presentations and you will start using your thumb a lot more. Hope this video was helpful. There is no need to be afraid of the bait casters. They're amazing tools. Please like and subscribe Savage Gear channel. These reels will be available across the Europe in January 2022. See you in our next video.